Welcome back guys to part three of TIG Welding for Beginners 2020. Today we're going to be going over dry runs and the importance of proper positioning. If you guys have any questions about difficulties you've had in TIG welding, make sure to leave your question down in the comment box below and we'll try to help you out and let's get started. Welcome back. Today we're going to be going over Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be going over part three of TIG Welding for Beginners 2020. Now if you haven't watched part one, I want to encourage you to go back and do that because you can be practicing your feed while you're watching part three. One thing that's very important while you're feeding your rod is timing. Proper timing in between dab is crucial to getting a nice, smooth, consistent weld. So what I'd like you guys to do is as you're feeding your rod, either count out loud or at least lip it and go, one, two, three, one, two, three, or just lip it. But I know sometimes it can be weird to say it out loud for some reason. Just to show you how much difference it can make by lipping it or saying it out loud with your timing and consistency, I wanna show you with just a little challenge. Whether you're on your computer or on your phone, go down to that little thumbs up button below the video, and what I want you to do, I want you to mouth one, two, three, but only push it twice. So try that. Go one, two, three, and only push it twice. I bet you can't do it. So let's get started with our video. Oh, and make sure that thumbs up button stay blue after you're done with it. So today's video, we are still not gonna be even firing up the welder. I firmly believe that if you can conquer a few of these exercises before you even turn the welder on, it is gonna make your life so much easier. Now what this exercise is, is a dry run. Now what a dry run is, is when you take your torch and assume the position that you're gonna be welding in and run your torch over the area the weld is intended to go and try to maintain a consistent speed and motion without varying from the path of your intended weld. Now I do dry runs daily, especially with out of position welds. What I'll do is I'll set up my rests and try to run that torch in the correct position in one smooth continuous pass. And what that will do is show me if, for one, if it's possible, and maybe I need to rearrange my rests so I can start at a slightly advanced position to maintain the entire weld, or two, if it's even possible, and maybe it's not possible to do it in one sweep, and I can plan out where my starts and stops are gonna be. So what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to set up some little coupons, maybe take and tack together a T-joint or butt joint to start with. And we're gonna assume that our materials are the same thickness, so we're gonna hold our torch at a 45 degree angle, right in between our 90 degree butt joint. Next, we're gonna take our hand with our rod in it, and all this is while our welder is completely turned off. And we're gonna start feeding our rod and lipping to ourselves. One, two, three. Now what I want you to do is just hold your hand down by where the weld is gonna be, but we're not even gonna concentrate on feeding that rod into the weld right now. We're gonna concentrate on being consistent feeding it, and we're gonna concentrate on moving our torch consistently. So we wanna pull that torch along and count. One, two, three, one, two, three, as we're feeding our rod. But the important thing we wanna concentrate is feeding and pulling our torch, doing both consistently. So we're gonna start feeding, and we're gonna start evenly moving our torch down the weld, maintaining that tungsten at an even distance away from the weld and pulling it through the entire time. It's kind of like patting your head and rubbing your tummy. You're doing multiple functions at once. And this is only two of your functions. You gotta be running your amperage as well. So if you can conquer these two first before you throw a third one in, it's gonna make things a lot easier. Do this over and over again. Pull that torch along as you're feeding the rod be as consistent as possible. Now, one important thing for while you're doing this is having a good rest and positioning your material properly. My two favorite things for rests are these one, two, three machine blocks. I can leave a link for these in the description. It's only like 10 or $12 for the pair of these. These are great for squaring things up and for using as rests because you have three automatic different positions. You have one inch, two inch, and three inch that you can use for rests. And you can rest your arm on that guy. And maybe you need to come over here and maybe you need to rest your torch hand on it as well. If you have a higher spot, 
and you can feed that through. The other great part about these is these slide. If you can't twist your wrist the entire way across that weld, is you can slide it. If you can get it down evenly and slide that smoothly. My second favorite thing to use for a rest is good old chrome covered tape measure. It's a good smooth surface and you can grab that guy and slide it along nice and smoothly. So make sure you have a proper rest and assume a comfortable position. Because if you're not comfortable, it's gonna make things even harder to feed. Another thing to consider when you're doing your dry runs is positioning your part. Sometimes you cannot move your part, but other times you can take advantage of that and move it over. A good trick is if you've got a nice straight fillet weld that you're doing, position that so that you're parallel in line with your table. And this works as a great guide. You can rest your hand along the side there and you can drag your hand and you know that you're gonna maintain that proper distance. It's gonna be easier to hold a nice steady thing. So do that other dry run like that. Start feeding your rod off to the side. One, two, three. And start dragging your torch. One, two, three. Count it out. Nice, even, slow. Feed that rod, go all the way out. Or maybe you have a roll cage that you're trying to build or a chunk of furniture where you got some tubing. This is another great opportunity to do your dry runs and figure out what that most comfortable position is. And grab your rod, make sure you have good rests, figure out your starting points, start feeding your rod, and maintain that torch position all the way around. And like I said, maybe you can't get it in one pass. All the more reason to do a dry run, it helps you map out where you want your starts and stops. Along with that, finding a rest on a tube frame or chassis can be difficult. And one of my go-to tools for that is weld clamp style vice grips. And you can clamp these guys on to your tube. And it uses a great thing that you can hold your hand off of and pivot off of. It's going to be isolated from your material, so your hand's not going to get as hot as if you're resting directly on the material. And you can unclamp it and reposition it wherever. So do those dry runs. Go through it again. Full position. So thanks for sticking with me to this point, guys. I know this might not be the most exciting part, but I wholeheartedly believe that if you can conquer feeding your rod and doing those dry runs, like I said, it's like patting your head and rubbing your belly, but there's still more stuff to add. Eventually we're gonna to have to be doing temperature control with our feet. So if you can sit there and conquer these simple steps and we can add them all together, it's gonna to go miles into not creating bad habits and for all these proper motions just to be more intuitive when you're putting all these motor skills together in compilation to try to make a nice clean well. So thanks for watching guys. Subscribe so you don't miss next week's video. Keep practicing your feeds, do your dry runs, and go build some.